Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be looking at the Titans from the anime and manga series Attack on Titan. Titans are, for the sake of brevity, human beings transformed into huge deformed monstrosities that feast on humans and are involved in a war between two countries. With their appearance balancing uncannily between the human and inhuman, and their monstrous behavior and story, they should be a very fun addition to our channel. So here goes a thank you to all who asked to see the titans and the entity that originated them in the comments, and to our patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. If you too are enjoying these videos, please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing or joining our Patreon, link available in the video's description. Now, without further ado, let's get started. While fungal infections are known to have all sorts of undesirable effects on animals, most of the worst of them were usually limited to invertebrates, some of which, like the venom fungus, could be seen puppeteering their hosts to do their bidding. However, the potential of such infections was unimaginable until the last century. Titanomyces imiri is a fungal parasite that infects the nervous system of animals, after which it expands towards the rest of the body and heavily alters the physiology of its host. This parasite is capable of incorporating and expressing genes of its host, a phenomenon related to horizontal gene transfer thus allowing these fungi to adapt more easily to new hosts and to their specific genetic makeup. While this infection had been seen in certain species of animal and, it is believed, even some species of plants, it was only when human beings were infected that the full extent of its effects was known. Humans infected by these fungi would slowly change physically and mentally, and the main way Titanomyces would achieve this is by actively producing transcription factors that revert the organism to an earlier development state, then expressing high amounts of growth hormone to make the host grow much bigger. However, this growth will be uneven, causing the constantly growing host to become deformed in the process, at times becoming unable to walk soon after becoming infected. The digestive system and reproductive organs of the host will degenerate until almost disappearing, as they are no longer needed by the parasitic fungi. Rather than having the host digest food, the fungi itself will digest almost the entirety of their food and send the nutrients back to the host, getting rid of waste material through regurgitation and making the digestive system beyond the stomach useless. As for the sexual organs, the host will no longer reproduce after infection, the fungi itself periodically releasing spores through the host's mouth and nose. Infected humans, colloquially called titans due to their huge size, will be seized by an insatiable hunger and forced to feed on anything they may find, favoring meat above all, even that of their fellow human beings. From this constant food intake, the fungi will obtain the necessary resources to grow and reproduce, as well as making its host grow and regenerate from injuries, thus making them much better at feeding without needing to worry about much else. As much food as this process requires, it is not integral to the survival of the parasite and its host. Titans have been known to survive long periods of time without food, as energy will keep being obtained through photosynthesis, achievable thanks to the fungi producing chlorophyll and light-catching areas on their host's body thanks to Titanomyces obtaining the necessary genes for this process after infecting a tree. The husk of the exact tree that produced this infection can be seen nowadays, towering above all nearby trees, where it easily captured more sunlight, producing more energy for its parasite. 
A few days after initial infection, the human host will begin losing all traces of their personality and consciousness to this hunger. As the fungal parasite turns off and repurposes certain areas of its brain it no longer needs. This will also prevent the titan from feeling pain, which, along with their new regeneration capabilities, destroy pretty much all chances that anything will stop a titan from eating. Infection is irreversible, and the only known way to stop an infected human is destroying their nervous system, most easily accomplished by cutting their nape. This will also expose the fungi, which has fully infected the nervous system. It will remain alive, still capable of infecting new hosts, and will glow lightly, causing the infected spine to resemble a long, multi-legged worm. It is believed this glow helps the fungi attract the attention of potential hosts whenever spores would grow on unviable tissue, such as rocks or dead trees. Occasionally, titans formed through this infection will have unusual properties that distinguish them from the norm, now understood to happen due to errors or mutations of the transcription factors used by the fungi to infect its host. This will lead to a myriad of anomalies, including an erratic or unusual behavior, that is, when compared to the usual mindless hunger of titans, further deformations caused by the growth of out-of-place specialized tissue, or even a conservation of the host's consciousness and personality, forcing it to be fully reasoning and awake without being able to resist its new urges. What's more, Unlike regular titans, abnormal titans have been known to attack and even kill other titans, likely due to this retention of consciousness. This phenomenon was noticed by two European countries that found themselves at war during the 20th century, and soon they realized the destructive power of these anomalous titans. By experimenting and creating different strains of Titanomyces imiri, the war was soon taken to new heights of violence and horror. These new strains could be used to turn people through an injection of infected spinal fluid, and through rigorous training, conditioning and further experimentation, the infected people were able to remain conscious and in full use of their faculties while gaining the combat advantages of huge size and resistance to pain. These specialized and carefully selected strains allowed the generation of bone tissue outside the body, creating both dense armor and localized weapons such as reinforced claws and jaws, hammer-like structures, and even sharp, deadly blades. Smaller, more mobile titans were created to move easily through urban environments, as well as colossal titans that towered over even other titans great for their sheer destructive power and, perhaps even more, their impact on enemy morale. Other titans were made by infecting animal tissue with titanomyces and horizontally transferring genes to their new hosts. These forms were very varied, with changes observable in their external anatomy, such as four and horns, and even including skeletal changes leading to a quadrupedal animalistic stance. One of the most specialized strains developed, however, was not intended for combat. It reduced the host to an almost skeletal, yet still titanic figure, which could be used by taking advantage of the fungi's usual infection methods to synthesize different compounds, which included both vaccines and substances that made the populations more docile and susceptible to propaganda in some cases even allowing those in power to directly influence their memories and actions. This last titan was allowed to be used only by those highest in the hierarchy of the country, including royalty and army generals. As cruel and horrible as war can be, the presence of titans only added to the horror and bloodshed, and that was before things took a turn for the worse. In the heat of the battle, Infected soldiers would often lapse into the same cannibalistic hunger that characterized other titans, and so a new phenomenon was discovered. 
as Titans killed and fed on other Titans, it was discovered the specialized strains of Titanomyces were transferable through the same horizontal gene transfer that created the strains to begin with. Soon, Titan on Titan warfare became the norm as each side strove to copy the strains of the enemy, causing unmeasurable loss of lives. Survivors of the Titan program did not fare much better. As subjects, even those who had not yet transformed and remained fully conscious, would be affected by severe distortion of their senses and perception of time, which would only get worse as time went on. In the end, the body of those infected, even when properly cared for, would deteriorate and wither away, finally dying as a result. No survivor of the program is known to have lived more than 13 years, nor to have done so in anything more than absolute agony. And that's it for Speculative Biology Look into Titans. Now, I do realize there are some important differences between the original Titans and our speculative biology version, but those were made for the sake of biological plausibility. For instance, the transformation of these Titans was a unique and slow process, as, unlike in the original material, biological entities cannot suddenly summon or make disappear the enormous amounts of biological tissue such as bone and muscle, that would be needed to suddenly transform a human into a giant. It might not be as dramatic as the Titan transformations seen in Attack on Titan, but it was still interesting to craft a more realistic version to use on this video. I also decided to remove the aspects of the story that involved royal bloodlines in order to keep this as a more self-contained speculative biology phenomenon rather than the long format story of the original. Also worth mentioning is why I decided to set this story in Europe. While the original material is Japanese and the story happens in-universe on an alternate African continent, the themes and settings seemed quite European coded to me. I did, however, refuse to actually name any countries since I believe accusing countries of fictional war crimes would have been in poor taste. In the end, although quite challenging given my lack of contact with the quite expansive lore of the original material, this was an incredibly fun thought experiment and I hope you guys enjoyed the end result. And remember, if there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.